Good afternoon and welcome to You Create Art at Home. My name is Bess and I'm here with your daily dose of me time. This is your chance to find your arty side, shake away the blues and the stresses of the day. Hey, we're over that Wednesday hump, aren't we? So tomorrow is Friday, whoop, whoop, weekend's riding. But this is your 15 minute recharge, reset, recalibrate for the day. If you're rushing off to a meeting, remember, I will save this video so you can always tune in later, okay? Why don't you send me a message down below? Let me know that you're uh, watching on the replay, hashtag replay. Um, and let me know why it is you're watching on the replay. Did you have something on? It's kind of a good for me to get an insight into exactly what goes on for my um, viewers, I was gonna say, uh, for you guys, the, the guys that I'm connecting with. What are you doing during the day where you're taking your time out? And what job do you do? What do you service? Where do you go? I'm kind of sat here at home my job is, well, creating art, isn't it? I'm an art educator. And um, at the moment, my art educating is all being done through this because obviously COVID has closed my studio down. But, uh, you know, maybe you are back in your office. Maybe you're back at your workplace. Maybe you're still working from home too. Either way, because I'm nosy and because I want to share the love, I'd love to hear what's going on. So what are we talking about today? Well, I have been up since 3.30 a.m. Oh, I know, I know. I am blinking balmy. That's one thing you'll get to know. I've been up since 3.30 a.m. because I have committed to myself during this period of transition and change that we're all going through that while I have the time to expand my mind, to challenge myself, and to start thinking outside the box, that is what I'm going to do. So I've done a couple of training courses. Of course, the two training courses that I wanna do are hosted by American companies, and so middle of, a mo middle of the night it was for me. So I was down in my pajamas with a cup of tea at 3.30 this morning, waiting for a four o'clock Zoom conference training. Fantastic, I had literally, it was 6.30, I heard the kids get up, and I'd been down there for three hours, and I was pumped. And in my mind, I thought I'd go back to bed. But you know, when something switches on, when you open your mind to opportunity, when you open the door to something that you hadn't considered before, and you think, uh, oh, okay, this is a thing. Yeah, I can try this. And you've been so tunnel vision, haven't we? We stay in our lane, and we're so tunnel vision, doing the do, hamster wheel, all of that. COVID's come along, boom, changed everything. And all of a sudden, well, I'm gonna tell you something. I have not felt this energized since when I was at university. When I left university and I thought I was gang-ho and it was all to play for um, and that the world was my oyster, I kind of feel like that now. Here I am at 48 and I've got that same sort of energy. So today's all about thinking outside the box. So I'm gonna spin you around, put you down because we're um, at home on my desk. Oh, look at that, I just caught my foot on it there, so you just tilted. Uh, spin you around, put you down, and then we'll do a little drawing together, okay? But it, the theme today is all about trying something, thinking outside the box, and seeing where it might get you. Okay, so here we go. Gonna spin you around, spin. You get to see my lovely working station. Pop you down. And stick my extra light on for you. And there's my first little doodle. And it says, get better, not bitter. Which, you know, sometimes we try these things and you know what, we do fail. Um, I've certainly been on crossroads before and I've certainly, um, I don't know, taken the wrong turn, I guess. But is it really the wrong turn? Because when you fail, you got options. You can cry or you can try. You might have to go in a different direction than the one you were heading, but you know what? There's always options. And I think when COVID started and I came up against a blank wall and thought, oh my goodness, this is the end of my business. I just went left. I just turned left and went down another avenue. So instead of getting bitter, 
I've got better. Now I, I'm having to invest in myself without a shadow of a doubt. I'm having to uh, work hard and challenge myself and evolve myself and my business. But there is something new that's afoot, which is quite exciting. All right, so let's get our drawing started. Now, this exercise might be a little bit challenging for some of you because we're not going to necessarily copy, well, you can copy me, but I wanna challenge you to kind of do your own thing. What does that mean? Well, this is my pen. Hello, my name's Percy. Let's take it for a walk. So I'm gonna take it for a walk. I'm gonna go across here. Now at this stage, when I take my pen for a walk, sometimes I don't know where it's gonna go. Meaning I'm not drawing a cat or a dog or I'm not drawing a specific, um, I don't know, vehicle, or I just don't have anything specifically in mind at this stage. I'm kind of going, well, I'm just gonna let the mood take me and see what happens. So I feel at the moment my head's going, hmm, I'm gonna draw a kind of mountain there. So I'm gonna draw this kind of mountain. So if that's a mountain, then that must be a mountain. So let's put some more kind of craggy bits. So my, it's very scratchy and very scribbly. Now this would be sort of like a creative brain dump, wouldn't it? So if you're in the office or at your workplace or maybe you own your own business and you're thinking about which direction you're gonna take your business or what other products you could develop or how you stretch things into a new, whole new arena, well, you have to let the confines of your box go and you have to try something new. My camera keeps on refocusing strangely. I don't know why it's doing that. So sorry about that, but anyway. Okay, so I'm now thinking that maybe there's another little... Do you know what I've got in my head? I've got in my head the Hanalong, Hanalong Bay in... Um, North Vietnam, that's where I'm thinking. I'm thinking of that when I'm drawing this, which is one of those incredible places if you've never been, stick it on your bucket list. It is off the scale. I think there was a um, uh, James Bond film filmed there. I'm pretty sure there was. So this is, I'm just kind of putting in, I don't know what these are, floating bits of island in water. So I'm gonna make this look like water. And I have no design and no idea really what I'm doing. I'm just drawing. Okay, so if these are mountains, I need to get some scale to my picture. So I'm gonna to start to draw a cloud. Now to make it look like a cloud and not a mountain, I need to kind of at least have some kind of rounded shape to it because that's what we're taught when we're kids. And so when we're taught when we're kids, those sort of shapes, the round fluffy cloud makes sense to us all. And of course they are in the sky anyway. All right, now I'm gonna get a pencil and I'm gonna to start to shade this. Now, if this is a mountain, then obviously it's a solid mass. So I'm gonna shade it in with pencil one way and the other way. And the same on this one, shade it in with pencil one way and the other way. And then I'm just gonna add some of those sketchy lines across the horizontal for the water. And then I'm just gonna add in a little bit of color for my cloud. Now that's okay, but it's not quite enough, is it? It's not quite enough. So what would happen if I was to take that post-it note and I was to get a bigger piece of paper and I was to put the post-it note right in the middle of that bigger piece of paper. Now all of a sudden, the game has changed. Now all of a sudden, I have more opportunity. I have a bigger space to exercise my mind. So now, I'm gonna keep on drawing. All of a sudden, my perspective Gosh, I'm sorry the camera keeps on um, auto-focusing. It's never done that before, isn't that strange? But now my perspective is very, very different because all of a sudden I have a bigger space 
I can see so much more. In fact, I never realized before that there's a whole mountain right behind this view. Look at that, a gigantic mountain. And this cloud, we can put right in front of the mountain, which helps us realize really how tall that mountain is. And let's get the cloud to go right across there. And let's finish off the left-hand side. Maybe there's another little mountain there. And if this is, um, I'm just gonna get a tiny bit of sticky tape. So I've got this, oh, dropped it. Got this sticky tape on my desk. I'm just gonna get a tiny bit of sticky tape just to stick the corner of that down so it doesn't flap. So if this is Hanalong Bay, or somewhere like Han Hanalong Bay, some beautiful tropical paradise -y place, then it's a really place of magic, isn't it? It's hundreds and thousands of years old, and these are old volcanic, um, volcanic mounds. And I'm gonna put a bridge right there, a little rope bridge between those mountains. And then I'm gonna put a rope bridge here which means I'm gonna need another mountain. I've just decided that that needs to join up there. So you can see this picture is literally evolving as we speak. It's evolving and I'm working it out. There's my, I need to put in some dark area there for my hard structure. Now I need to make this bit look like a mountain. So let's add in some more crags, cracks and texture. Just like this. And obviously now I need to start to shade that so that looks the same. So if this is that mountain, let's keep that shade coming over here and we'll bring it up to there and we'll shade in that part. And we're gonna do exactly the same under this part of the mountain. What else might we find? What else might we see? Well, we started to put the water in so we'll add the rest of the water going sideways. And then it feels like to me, there's a little boat here. Well, I never saw that boat until just then. And all of a sudden that boat's appeared. So I'm gonna add a little sail. You can do whatever shape boat you want. It's really a metaphor, isn't it? A metaphor is, it's an image, um, a vision, a creative device. And on the back of this little boat is a person. And that little person is gonna be me. I'm gonna add in a couple of birds to my picture. And over here, on this side, I'm just gonna move my picture slightly. On this side, I'm gonna add a really low moon or sun that's setting. Maybe it's a moon actually, I'm thinking, because I'm now, sh I've, for some reason I just picked up the pencil and I started shading around it. So that answers that. We're in a moonlit scene now. So can you see how the storytelling evolves? Now I started with just a plain old post-it note and I started by just sketching a shape. From the shape, I sketched the next shape. From the next shape, I sketched the next shape. And this is creative brainstorming. It's exactly the same. Sometimes we need to write one word down and one word might be your customer, your product. It might be, um, something that happened in your business. It might be something that's happened in your family. But until you write it down and throw it out to the universe, you can't really change it. You can't affect the change that you need to change. You can't make a difference. So you need to understand what that word is. And once you understand what that word is, then you can understand how to change, how to make a difference, how to 
step outside your box and find the path. So this is my journey here and I'm stepping outside my box and I'm aiming for this path. In fact, right away here, I'm going to put a pier now here. This is what I'm thinking. So this is now a pier. Let me move it over. So I need this to make this look like a pier. So let's put some big pylons on. And we'll put some water ripples there. So this is a pier. And this is where my boat is going. I'm gonna turn it like there. And then from the pier, this is the journey. Gonna take me up over the mountain, up over this mountain. And then here, look, I'm gonna draw one more really tall bridge. And on the top of this mountain, I'm just drawing some strange little cairn or building. Let me let me pull that close to you. Uh, let's see if I can do it this way. Can you see what I've drawn there? It's not really anything, it's just a shape. But you get the impression that if we went over the bridge, over the footsteps, over my bridge, over my next bridge, up that mountain, over that bridge, up, up, up. And maybe we just do a kind of dotted line around as if that is a trail. And that's my sketch today. My sketch today is really trying to allow you the opportunity to see that through drawing, through mark making through and this isn't you know this isn't a posh sketch you're not going to put this in a frame or anything and that's not the point the point is to show you that you start with one thing and expand expand your mind expand your ideas expand your vision take yourself on a visual journey this is me i didn't even start inside my journey but i'm here now and i can see clearly the path that i'm about to follow so I'm gonna sign that. If you haven't got a book like this, just before you go, let me show you. This is, my, this is my little sketchbook that I have when I go out on picnics or if I go on a holiday or something like that. And I just wanna show you some of the doodles that I've done. Look, even at the beginning of my book, it says, breathe, reset, relax. So I wanna show you that even though I'm sharing this with you, I do actually practice what I preach. I journal some bits and bobs. Here's a picture. So I went to Canada last year, and this is one of the First Nations totem poles that I saw. It's a carving in a tree. I just thought it was beautiful. The age, the essence of story. That was a picture which I never quite finished, but it was the view from my hotel. This was me on, on a cruise ship. This was the day we, we left on the Celebrity Eclipse. Gosh, how I feel differently about cruises now. But I was inside this pod, just relaxing, and I just draw, drew the moment where I was having a hot coffee and I was just relaxing. This is leaving Vancouver. So this was actually on the, on the deck of the cruise ship. That was my view of Vancouver. So instead of postcards, I just captured my my journey in little drawings, little vignettes of what I was seeing and what I was doing. This is again on top of the, the view from the cruise and this is going under the Lionsgate Bridge. Just put it up. That was the boat going under the Lionsgate Bridge. I did some um, poetry. Maybe I'll share those with you at some point, but that was my poem. There's a beautiful picture of some seals that were just bobbing along on a buoy. Here's the Hubbard Glacier, which was the poet, poem I wrote about the Hubbard Glacier. Oh my goodness me. There was never a moment where I was more overwhelmed with the fragility of our planet. And I know now that we've obviously all experienced that ourselves, haven't we? We've experienced it 
because we have seen how our planet has been able to breathe with us stopping and not using so much and putting so much out in the ether. And when I watched, they call it carving, when I watched some of this iceberg carving, the noise, whoosh, oh, well, off the scale, off the scale. So that was my little drawing there. And then finally, oh yeah, we went and had some fresh crabs. So that was me drawing in the fish market, the crab claws. So you can see, this is what I do. I have these little books um, and I doodle and I draw and I create poetry. This is my poet poem on the forest. It's called Shinring Yoko, Forest Bathing. And it was all about understanding the heartbeat of nature. And I haven't done this sort of thing since I was at university. Literally, this was me on holiday last year. So what I'm doing with you on these post-it notes is exactly the same. I'm just saying, open your mind, try something different. And when you try something different, look what you get. You get outside your box. You find something that you didn't even know you could do, a place you didn't even know existed. And well, there you go. I feel like I want to read my poem. Have you got two minutes if I read my poem? This is now my ego taking over. I just want to share my poem with you. Okay, I'm going to put you up, going to flip you over, and I'm going to share my poem with you. Because actually, I haven't, I haven't read this poem since Canada last year. And because we've just been through what we've been through with the earth and COVID, it feels really appropriate. So I'm going to share it. If you've had enough, go. Go, go, go. If you haven't had enough, enjoy. Sit back. Enjoy your coffee. Okay, hang on. I've got to find it now. All right. Mm. Okay, it's called White Thunder. Let's get rid of that, take my thing off. White Thunder by Bess. Crash, bang, a thunderous roar. A slice of 400 years falls into the ocean. A wall of ice like skyscrapers in a frozen city. Sharp points punctuate the barren ma mountain landscape resembling a precious mineral unearthed from the core. Yet fragile and vulnerable, it groans and creaks, pleading for help. Two old glaciers flank the Hubbard. Their lights are out, they no longer groan. Temperature rising, seas are warming. It, kill, it killed those faithful friends. They might return in years to come, pushed down once again from the mountain high like a frozen river, a train of a wedding dress. But for now, they lie brown, silent, like a footprint left in the sand. Boom! Another pillar of blue ice slides off and hits the dark ocean with a bang. Carving is a spectacular. You can taste the ice in the cold, misty air. I smile. My eyes are hypnotized by the glacier's beauty, majestic, proud, the lines of its life telling stories like a book. Shades of blue so bright, aquamarine, turquoise, cobalt blue, so many tones in between a kaleidoscope of color ever changing with the sun. Boom! A third icefall crashes as I turn my head to watch. Like thunder and lightning, you only hear the boom after the event. So this time, all I see is the white splash of the rising water from the impact. 400 feet above the water, 200 feet below. This natural giant leaves you breathless and in awe. Ever changing, ever moving. May we learn from our mistakes and protect our planet. Together, we must preserve our world. Ensure the treasures are not lost for the next 400 years. Dong, dong, dong. Now, can I just say, I am not a poet. That was literally me all rugged up with my hat and my gloves and, you know, um, on a cruise ship, stood out for the three hours watching this glacier. And I just had this urge to write poetry. So I really stepped outside my comfort zone, people. I literally do not write poetry. But I just had words. It was, it was, I can feel it now, the overwhelm, the sense of creativity and moment that I was trying to capture. And although I did do that drawing, 
the drawing couldn't convey the sound. It couldn't convey that moment, that fragile moment of the, of the glacier slipping off. And so I wrote it down in poetry. So it just shows, and, and I'm so thrilled that I've shared that with you because you now can understand my moment and that's what I'm giving you. I'm giving you your moment to try and open your mind to new things and to realize that creativity, whether it's written in word or in picture or in color or in black and white, really plays a part in giving us a sense of balance and enables us to tap into another part that when we sat there plodding away on our computer or balancing the books or, you know, whatever we do in our daily work, that part of the left brain sometimes, shh, be quiet. I'm trying to create. You need to let that right brain breathe. And if you've enjoyed this, you can find a lot of those opportunities at You Create Art at Home. I've got over 150 free art classes for you. Some of them are quick, quick draws, mini makes, and some of them are a bit more substantial, like a couple of hours, but you can take them for what they are. So if you've enjoyed this, pop along and have a look. If you think somebody else will enjoy this, please share the love. Let them know where I am. Let them know that Bess is here to connect with you and help you find your inner creativity. We all have it. We do. When we sit there at dinner and we choose whether we're gonna have a steak or prawn, that's a creative choice. Our taste, our nose, our smell, our sight, our ears, it's all part of everything. Our touch, it's all part of our five senses. And I'm just enabling you to open your mind to those. I, you're opening your mind to touch and to sight. And when you put it with poetry or when you put it with food or something like that, you just, it takes you into a whole new world, which I think is why I love cooking because I love the taste, the smell, the touch, and I love creating and designing plates and stuff. I'm not very good, but I do love it. Anyway, that's enough waffle for me for today. Tomorrow, I'm taking you on a little surprise trip. So please join me about 12.30 tomorrow because I'm taking you to my studio instead of here because my husband, who is my awe-inspiring mentor of fabulousness has made me a present and I want to share it with you guys. All right? So I'm not going to say any more. If you've enjoyed today, then please share your artwork. I'd love to see where your pen took you on your little journey. And um, I'll see you tomorrow. Take care. Lots of love. Bye.